If you're obese with a ravenous appetite, please, if you're diabetic, please consider a GLP-1 agonist, such as Mount Jero, Terzepatide, Zepbound. Welcome back to Dr. Colbert's broadcast. I'm here with my dad, Dr. Colbert, my mom, Mary, and my wife, Meredith, and I'm Kyle. And today we are talking about kidney disease. Dad, is this really as big of a problem? Kyle, we are seeing so much kidney disease today. And about, I would say, it's, it's actually one in seven adults have kidney disease in this country, chronic kidney disease. One in it's seven. One in seven, about 14% of U.S. adults or 35.5 million Americans with kidney disease, mainly because of the medicines we're taking, we're aging, We've got high blood pressure, diabetes stresses the kidneys, all the different medicines that stress the kidneys. And so we're going to talk about this epidemic of kidney disease we're seeing because you don't want to end up on dialysis. And dialysis, you have to go to a kidney clinic three days a week for three hours. You have to put a shunt in your forearm. And it's just horrible. It's a horrible life. Plus, you have no energy. You're exhausted. The kidneys are critical. We've got to protect them. And so you say, why we're seeing so much is mainly because of diabetes and high blood pressure. We have an epidemic of these two diseases. We have about 8.4 million Americans with diabetes, and we have about 98 million with prediabetes, which will eventually many develop diabetes. It's almost half the country. We have 120 million with high blood pressure, and those one in three diabetics tend to get chronic kidney disease, one in three, whereas one in five with high blood pressure tend to get kidney disease. Well, now, when you have both high blood pressure and diabetes, you're even a uh, greater risk of chronic kidney disease. It mainly occurs in, in African Americans or Black Americans. About 20% of adult Black Americans have chronic kidney disease. That's How huge. Is that? How is that? Because they have more diabetes, more obesity, and more high blood pressure. It all follows that. Right it's that there. simple. Is it diet related? Absolutely. So high sugar American diet. Yes, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about exactly how. But first, you've got to reverse your type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. which is a choice disease. You see, you catch a cold, you catch a flu, but you develop type 2 diabetes by consistently making the wrong food choices, choosing sugar, cakes and pies and cookies and white bread and foods that convert to sugar real rapidly, like white rice, white bread, pasta, things like that, pizza. All of that's horrible and signs you up for diabetes. As far as Hispanic adults, 14% of Hispanics have chronic kidney disease. And 12% of white Caucasians have kidney disease. It's an epidemic here in this country and hardly anyone's discussing it. Now, I've have heard, I don't know if this is still the case. Years ago, I heard that American Native Americans had a high percent. I think that was heart disease, though. Well, but, well, the Hispanics and Native Americans both have about 12... Have horrible diets. The, well, they're horrible. twice as likely to develop end-stage in, in kidney disease compared to whites. So, again, uh, Native Americans have a much higher risk of kidney disease. Well, I heard that it was for the Native Americans, it was because of the game hunting and their immune systems were built up for game hunting. No, no there's mainly because they're foods. eating too many sugars, too many, too much corn and things like that. Because the processed, the processed foods are, are setting up for diabetes. Like they, everybody. Many have diabetes. Many of the Native Americans have diabetes and high blood pressure. These are killers to the kidneys. They kill the, they destroy the kidneys slowly, but eventually. And we can't go without our kidneys. We can't, you know, unless you know, unless you get a kidney transplant. But you see. It's worse in older Americans over 65, more kidney disease in older Americans, and especially if you have diabetes and high blood pressure or a com combination of the two. And that's why a you age want to have your blood pressure checked. Exactly. As you get older, you don't want to ignore that because the high blood pressure is damaging your kidney. Well, you can lower your blood pressure. Exactly. It's so easy. So well, I kind of have high blood pressure. Well, let me explain. On the high side. First of all, you need to listen to my podcast on diabetes, and especially type 2 diabetes. I did many podcasts on this, on how to fix it. So I'm going to tell it to you in a nutshell. This is how you reverse diabetes. We do it every day in my practice almost. And number one, refer to my healthy uh, Beyond Keto, which is right here. It tells you the healthy keto zone diet or keto diet of uh, what to eat. And uh, it literally brings your sugar down for most everyone or the healthy Mediterranean. Either one. That's the baseline. Would you tell everybody what a good, healthy blood pressure is? 
I'm, I'm at diabetes right now, but blood pressure, a normal blood pressure, they changed the definition in 2017. It's now anything that's greater than 130 the top number and 80 the bottom number is high blood pressure. That was changed in 2017. Most doctors still think it's got to be over 140, over 90. That's wrong. That's not the right, de the real definition now. I'll As of 2017, that. if your blood pressure is 130 systolic or greater or 80 or greater, you got high blood pressure and you need to listen to this and get it down because we use natural things to get it down all the time, mm -hmm. natural supplements, and we reverse it. But here's the key. I'm going to tell you how to lower your pre blood pressure and lower your sugar. First, lower Wait, your sugar. I'm listening. If you don't do this, your kidneys are aging and you may eventually get chronic kidney disease. So here's how you do it. Number one, follow my healthy keto zone diet, either the keto portion or the Mediterranean. Either one will, will work. Hear that, keto followers, if you're watching this from the keto zone group. Right. Keto zone diet slash beyond keto same thing right beyond exactly keto, just the updated keto zone diet. exactly now number two is take the supplements for this is if you especially if you're pre-diabetic or diabetic take the supplements carb assist and carb assist is one of the supplements that lowers your blood sugar naturally and berberine and carb assist has berberine in it so you want to take one twice a day on that and then berberine 600 to 1200 milligrams twice a day and there's if tons sugar, of berberine out there. yeah if your sugar's high take uh, start with 600, and if you don't have any gut issues, go to 1,200 milligrams. It's amazing. Berberine today. is so effective. Oh, berberine is the most amazing longevity nutrient. It really is. And, and it's in our know. carbases. They don't. Now, the next thing you do is aerobic exercise. You've got to move or you're going to age your kidneys. But exercise is great for losing weight and controlling your blood sugar. You need to exercise three to five days a week, 20 to 30 minutes, preferably five days a week. And walking, just brisk walking is sufficient. Pickleball is good? Pickleball is excellent. So I'm good. Consider intermittent fasting where you skip breakfast or breakfast or dinner. And just have a cup of coffee or tea with stevia without any other creamer. So what's your activity that you do? I do pickleball. Mom's doing pickleball. Dad, what are you doing now? I do an uh, elliptical, elliptical machine. For oh, you do elliptical. I do and you're, you're starting to do pickleball. Pickleball, too. Yeah, I work out. Well, I know you go to the gym. Oh, do you get on the treadmill or the elliptical, or which one do you do? I do the treadmill, the Good. elliptical, and the stair step. That's great. Well, those are excellent. If you're obese with a ravenous appetite, please, if you're diabetic, please consider a GLP-1 agonist, such as Mount Jero, Terzepatide, Zepbound. Uh, people on average lose about 20.1% of their body weight on that. Isn't and that like it a... drops your blood sugar. Amazing. It's great for diabetes. And it stops, it helps your kidneys tremendously, protects your kidneys. So that's really important. So Ozempic is Ozempic. The other one is the semaglutide or Ozempic or Rebelsis or uh, Wagovi. Which one Those do are, you like the best? Well, Wagovi, semaglutide, they lose about 13% of their body weight. It just stops one appetite hormone, whereas Terzepatide or Mount Jero or Zepbound, it, it turns off two appetite hormones and they lose about 20.2% of their body weight, well, which is huge. What happens if they take that and they follow the keto zone diet? They'll lose even more faster. But it's not unhealthy. Not at all. It's not it's great. Too much weight. Not at all. That's and true. especially if they skip one or two meals oh. a day. Okay. That's if you're obese. Yes, if you're obese, you need to do that, especially if you're uh, class two or three obesity, which are real obese. Now, that's, in a nutshell, how to control your diabetes. That's that simple. Now, I go into detail on our other podcasts, but that's in a nutshell. To control bl high blood pressure, here's what you have to do. First, if your blood pressure is high, either get on a blood pressure medicine. There are many different ones. There's ARB medicine, angiotensin II receptor blockers like uh, Losartan, or there's also ACE inhibitors like Lisinopril. Like there's beta blockers like Toprol. There's uh, diuretics and calcium channel blockers. So these all help to lower it. What I love is a natural supplement called Mukta, M-U-K-T-A, Fati, V-A-T-I. You get it online. And you just take well, usually one twice a day or start with one twice a day and then work up to two twice a day. It brings your blood pressure down significantly and helps. And if you do the other things I'm telling you about, it'll usually help control your blood pressure for the majority of people. Now we have Circuzone that helps. With and Circuzone also helps. That's our supplement. That's yes. beetroot powder. Beetroot powder. So effective is beetroot powder or arginine, citrulline. These. That does, it dilates your arteries. It does reduce your blood pressure and it is effective. 
but even more so is this herb from India, Ayurvedic herb called Muktavadi with 12 organic compounds. But it works great with it. Search your zone works great with Muktavadi. A lot of my now, patients was it, choose it. You used to recommend plant sterile. Was it plant sterile? That's for or cholesterol. Or cholesterol is, yes. Okay, that's why I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay. I would be recommending the now, cholesterol. To lower blood pressure, you've got to, number one, get your pressure down. And either either get on Muktavadi natural or get a blood pressure pill. That's number one. Number two, lose weight. The more weight you lose, the blood pressure follows your weight. When you lose weight, your pressure comes down. You want to decrease your sodium intake to no more than 1,500 milligrams a day. Sodium or salt raises your blood pressure. A teaspoon of salt, so I'd like about 1,000 milligrams of sodium. So you want to decrease your salt to one. 1,500 milligrams or less. Now, I find this being more and more of a controversial topic um, mm-hmm. because I'm hearing messages out there. Uh, there are some health-related podcasts that'll say, you need more salt. You know, don't listen to the... Well, for certain diseases, like for, um, you know, for migraine headaches and all, they're putting people on more salt. But if you have high blood pressure, you have to usually limit your salt. Now, you can do other way around. If you've got to have salt, you can take more blood pressure medicine. You can take a diuretic that excretes the excess salt, or you can lose the weight, which if you do keto, you're, it's like if you're doing keto, it's like you're on a diuretic. So it lowers your blood pressure amazingly well on the okay. keto diet. So when I play pickleball, and I'll find myself after two, three hours, I'll take my hat off, and it is like a white cap of salt. Oh, so, yeah. It is. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Exercise does. Our body will sure. salt. So, exactly. And so I wonder, am I deficient in salt? Could that cause higher blood pressure? Because I think the low... Not if you're deficient, no. No? No, you'll drop your blood pressure. But aerobic exercise is one of the best ways to lower your blood pressure. If you can do aerobic exercise, that's wonderful. It dilates Just, those arteries and drops the blood pressure. You know, in the military, uh, I remember this as a kid. We used to go to, uh, on the military base where the guys are working out and stuff, and they had these machines where you'd go up and you could just pump, 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 and, it, and they would be pink pills, and we thought they were oh, salt pills. And salt we, pills. As kids, we were eating them, and be like, ah! Salt. And, but they had them for the guys on the, who are working out, sweating a lot. Yeah, if you sweat they, a lot, and you start getting cramped, and they you would need the salt. take the salt and put it back in them. It helps they prevent heat stroke. Yeah, it helps They're prevent heat strokes. That's true. You're good. Maybe, Maybe I'm excreting the right amount then. Maybe I consume so much salt in my body. You probably do. Yeah. And, and you know, salted um, pumpkin and seeds will oh, yeah, cure that. Sure. <laughs> And also to lower blood pressure, follow the healthy keto diet or the healthy Mediterranean diet, especially the keto. It works like a diuretic. Now, what if you're trying to maintain, let's say your blood pressure is slightly elevated, um, you know, and you're, let's say your diastolic is, you know, at 90 or 95, all right? It's too high. That low number. That's That's not where I'm at. You better get on Muktavadi right away. Okay. One twice a day and it brings it down to normal. Okay. Okay, and now certain meds can raise it. Decongestants can raise your blood pressure. Adderall can raise it. Cold medicines will raise your blood pressure, so you need to avoid those. Cold medicines, interesting. Yeah, you know, it has Sudafed. Anything with Sudafedrin, Sudafed will raise a lot of people's blood pressure. You've got to be careful. Like Allegra D, the D is, and there's a decongestant. Okay, but uh, listen to my podcast on high blood pressure. Monitor your blood pressure daily. Best time to monitor it is in the morning mm-hmm. because our, our adrenals follow a circadian rhythm. We have the highest cortisol level in the morning around 8. When the cortisol goes up, the blood pressure goes up. When the cortisol goes down, the blood pressure goes down. A lot of people wait and check their pressure in the evening when the cortisol levels are lower, so their blood pressure is normal. But in the morning, between 8 and 12, is generally when the cortisol is highest. So check your blood pressure in the morning is the best. Now, it's best to check at different times of the day. And then learn to cope with stress. The more stress you're under, stress increases sympathetic tone. It causes the arteries to constrict. So when you're stressed in a hurry angry, irritated, anxious, it causes increased sympathetic tone and drives your blood pressure up. So just get in God's rhythm, take it easy, relax, take slow, deep breaths. We now know that lowering blood pressure, there's a machine called Respirate that teaches you how to breathe. You breathe out longer and it lowers your blood pressure. And so just practicing deep, slow breathing, especially exhaling longer than you inhale, will lower your blood pressure. That's simple. Do you need to inhale through your nose or your mouth? Doesn't matter. Just so you inhale, you exhale longer than you inhale, it'll drop your pressure. 
exhale longer than you inhale? Well, you can get there. your own machine called a respirate machine online. It's a couple hundred bucks. It'll teach you how to breathe and it'll drop, it drops your blood pressure. It's amazing how it works. They're like apps. You can yeah, you, exactly. And so you hear a little tone. And you just follow the tone and breathe according to the tone. When you're it's stressed, you're not breathing right. Now, really not. to learn to cope with stress years ago, 20 years ago, I wrote a book called Stress Less. It teaches you. The big thing is just uh, 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your cares on him, Jesus, who cares for you. When you learn to cast your cares on Jesus and leave them there, don't pick them back up, your stress will go away. That's and right. your blood pressure you will decrease. don't cast your cares on right. Kyle and don't cast your cares right. on me. Mary cares a lot my cares. cares on the Lord. That's right. Now, other causes of kidney disease or kidney uh, or, or high blood pressure or kidney disease like glomerulonephritis, pyelonephritis, chronic pyelonephritis, polycystic kidney disease, tubular and interstitial kidney disease, lupus, recurrent kidney infections, autoimmune diseases. So see your doctor and be checked for these. If you have uh, glomerulonephritis or something, you need to be under the care of a nephrologist. Also, just consuming two or more carbonated veg uh, beverages a day like sodas, you know, can increase your risk of developing kidney stones. Here's meds that stress your kidneys. Well, you know, one of the worst, you won't believe it. It's one of the most commonly taken meds. Adderall. No. <laughs> what? NSAIDs. Aleve, ibuprofen. Aleve. Uh, you know, any anti-inflammatory meds. Uh, NSAIDs are called NSAIDs. They increase fluid retention, can lead to decreased blood flow of the kidneys. NSAIDs decrease blood flow to the kidneys. They block prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are chemicals the body produces that dilate the arteries and improve oxygen to the kidneys. When you shut that down, you're decreasing blood flow to your kidneys wow. and your kidneys start degenerating or start, they don't function as well. And so uh, your NSAIDs, Advil, Aleve, Ibuprofen, Celebrex, um, Meloxicam, these are anti-inflammatories that are stressing kidneys and they can eventually lead to chronic kidney disease. If you own it long term, they just your kidneys need to be monitored if you're on these meds, okay? And you need to drink plenty of water. How do you have your kidneys monitored? Well, we, what we do blood tests? Yeah, there. When I do a CMP, a conference of metabolic panel, it checks the creatinine, the BUN, the estimated glomerular filtration rate, and the urinalysis checks for protein and blood. If you're spilling protein urine, that's a sign you're damaging your kidneys. And if your creatinine is increasing that's a, and your BUN, that's a sign you're damaging your kidneys. Now, your BUN can be increased when you don't drink enough water. So, again, that's why it's so important to monitor your kidneys because you have high blood pressure damaging your kidneys. It's like your blood pressure is like a, uh, someone punching your kidneys, and eventually they don't filter properly. And then your, your creatinine starts to rise, your BUN rises, and all of a sudden you've got stage 3 kidney disease. You go to your doctor and you say, wait. Uh, we, I thought we start with one. No, you're already in the midst of stage three kidney disease where you have half your kidney functioning. You're, and I, it, I just saw it. it from I see this all the time in my wow. patients. And you have to, you, you're and the I catch tell them. I catch it, yeah. And so if you got stage three kidney disease, you're in trouble. We're going to be talking more about that. Other meds, let's go through them real quick. They can stress your kidneys or diuretics like Lasix or furosemide. They can decrease blood flow to your kidneys and cause kidney damage. So it's best, if you do it, just have your kidneys monitored. And then certain antibiotics like aminoglycosides, like genomycin and neomycin can stress your kidneys. Bactrim or sulfa, sulfa drug to treat kidney or bladder infections. It can cause uh, crystals in the urine, and it can cause these crystals to be deposited in the kidney, stressing your kidney. If you take Bactrim or Septor or sulfa drug, drink plenty of water. Finally, your quinolones like Cipro, Levoquin, and vancomycin can uh, rarely cause acute kidney in injury. And also proton pump inhibitors like Nexium um, or the little purple pill, um, which is Prilosic, can stress the kidneys. So you just have to have your kidney functions monitored if you're on these long-term. And finally, contrast dyes like CT scan dyes can stress your kidneys. So you got to drink plenty of water, and I recommend glutathione after having those dyes. Well, I know it's a lot. It is a lot of information, but it's great information. And so that is why you're watching. We want to inform you and empower you with the information so that you don't have to wait until you're at stage three kidney. Yes, exactly. And so you want to start taking care of these preventative measures now. So stay with us. We're going to come back and we're going to talk more about how you can prevent it. Prevent yeah. it. Let's prevent these. Uh, yes. this, let's protect and prevent. Prevent so or overcome. 